What if the creatures of the world of Zelda were turned into Pokemon? I know a lot of you here on Absurd Zelda Theories came from my Pokemon channel, and so I thought it was only right that I ended up doing a collaboration with myself. However, when you Google Zelda Pokemon crossover, there's already some incredible art out there from Fakemon artists, and none more so than Bilsu, who has a whole project, The Link Dimension, all about this exact topic. Anyway, we've done a video today on his channel showing off new Tears of the Kingdom Fakemon, and then also on Birdkeeper Toby showing off Hyrulean variants for existing Pokemon. However, today I wanted to team up with myself and Bilsu to show you just a few of my favorite Zelda creatures turned into Pokemon. Hey Toby, the Link Dimension Project can simply be described as what if Zelda was a monster tamer? So even if you're not familiar with Pokemon, there's still plenty of Zelda references to grasp onto and new story beats to have absurd Zelda theories over. On my channel, there will be some Tears of the Kingdom inspired designs, but here we're going to take a look at some of the older Zelda titles. Ocarina of Time was one of the first Zelda games I ever played, and in Ocarina of Time, I was introduced to Navi the Fairy, who came with me everywhere on my adventure. Navi was super helpful, but also maybe a little bit too helpful. Hey, hey, listen, Bloom, watch out, hey! Listen. Then in Majora's Mask, we got Teetle and Tattle, and in Phantom Hourglass, we got Cecil, and these were sentient pixie fairies that would travel around with you. But I always found it strange that wherever you went, you could also find stray fairies that didn't have a voice that you could simply trap in a bottle, and their incarnation in Wind Waker shows just how sad they are trapped in there. But what would happen if Bilsu took this design and turned it into a Pokemon? Pixie, the fairy Pokemon. It is spirit type. Pixie can be found anywhere in Hyrule. They are known to heal those who have been weakened from battle. Pixie can always be found at Fairy Springs where the soothing waters are enchanted by their power. This Pokemon functions the way it does in Zelda, where if you catch it, it would heal your whole party to full. So even if you have no intention on keeping the one you caught, it still has its moments of use. Pixie will also have different evolutions based on various fairies throughout the series. Next up, we have the Bloopies, found all across Hyrule, and certainly these, these are not legendary Pokemon, compared to one-off creatures like the Lord of the Mountain, Satori. But it definitely is spiritual, and it's a rare creature. And if I was a Pokemon trainer, with the allure of one of these disappearing into a cave and the promise of riches, I would be enticed to add one to my Pokemon team. So how would it look as a Pokemon? Rablu, the Bloopy Pokemon, its spirit and forest type. Rablu are found throughout Hyrule's forests, mostly at night or in the early morning. Their bodies store spiritual energy that can be manifested into rupees. They share a similar appearance to other Pokemon found in Hyrule. Rablu will have a split evolution in the future for those Satori and Bubble Frog fans. It's also a great Pokemon to have on your team if you're looking to fill up your rupee wallet. Zonai constructs can now be found all across the skies of Hyrule, and in Tears of the Kingdom they've been falling down and awakening on the surface, and by far the most annoying are those using the flame emitter as a weapon. It has such a long reach and keeps burning, so unless you move fast, you're bound to take some damage. This of course can be their downfall, giving Link a gust of wind which he can use for an aerial attack, but still it'd be much nicer if we could just toss a Pokeball at one and catch it. Zonagon, the Draconic Construct Pokemon. It's stone and dragon type. These Pokemon are the result of the Zonai people's most powerful constructs come to life by the Great Paradox. These Pokemon are infused with Draconic energy and can hold many types of weapons. I actually made this before Tears of the Kingdom even came out. It would be quite a rare Pokemon to encounter in the Sky Islands that interacts with all sorts of items just like they do in game. Now for a creature that is less monster, but is still very central to the world of Zelda, and those are the horses. Stables are open all across the world, and the horse god is worshipped by those who stay within them. Horses help knights get around Hyrule, but are also mastered by those less noble. The horse of Phantom Ganon especially has always caught my interest, as it matches his design. As a kid, I always wondered if this horse was like secretly evil with its own plans to take over the horse realm of Hyrule. And that is the inspiration behind this design, Phantasmare. Phantasmare, the Gerudo Steed Pokemon. It's desert and phantom type. While called the Gerudo Steed, the Gerudo fear this phantasmal creature as it shrouds itself in sandstorms to attack its prey. Some say it's a reincarnation of the Demon King as a horse. This Pokemon is a third evolution of the Ponita line, with Zelda and Link getting their own versions in the future. It also has a Triforce-empowered form, which resembles the horse we saw Ganondorf riding in Tears of the Kingdom. 
And now finally, we have a design debuting right here in this video that takes inspirations from both a creature in Tears of the Kingdom and the older games, in this case, Ocarina of Time. It's a mashup of the more horrific monsters that lurk in Hyrule. From Ocarina of Time, we have Dead Hand, a barely humanoid monstrosity that brings nightmares to those who have encountered it. It emerges from the ground with its body pulsating and oozes, much like another creature from Tears of the Kingdom, the Gloom Hand, who find every way possible to give me a jump scare followed by a panic attack as I scramble up a nearby rock or tree to try and escape. So what happens when you take these two creatures and combine them together? You get Gloom Grasp. Gloom Grasp the Gloom Spawn Pokemon. It's Malice and Phantom type. These Pokemon are nightmares incarnate. They curse you with their presence when you least expect it. Gloom Grasp can spawn hands of gloom from the ground to ensnare its victims in a life-draining grip. This Pokemon was originally an old concept where I mixed a dead hand with a Floor Master. But once Tears of the Kingdom came out and we got the Gloom Spawn, I saw it as a perfect opportunity to bring it back and incorporate all the horrors that it has to offer. Of course, this is just one of three videos showing off new designs today. There's one over on Berkey Potobi, and there's one also on Bill Sue's channel. So do go check them out if you love these Zelda Pokemon crossover mashup designs, especially if you like the Zelda creatures imagined as Pokemon, because that's what Bill Sue's video is all about. Thank you all for watching. Links in the description, and of course, take care.